Hello and welcome to the Northwest Fusion Group YouTube channel. I'm Ian G Zero VGS. This video is about the Humble Internet Router. Now it's quite a complex subject, um, and as such, it's really hard to explain in a single video like this. It isn't intended to be a tutorial. Because of this, I'm only going to cover certain topics and I may simplify some of the items to get the idea over without fully covering the subject. That said, there should be plenty to give everyone an understanding of how a router works. So, on with the video. Before I go into any depth about routers, it's important to understand the concept of an IP address. The whole internet depends on the IP address to route information in exactly the same way telephones have numbers. IP stands for Internet Protocol and there are two versions of IP addressing. Version 4, also known as IPv4, or version 6, also known as IPv6. The reason for the new version is the limitation on addresses available. IPv4 was expected to provide far more than was ever needed, but as the internet expanded and more and more devices came online that required IP addresses, more addresses were needed and IPv6 was created to ensure we don't run out. For the purposes of this video, we'll concentrate on IPv4. All that seems complicated, doesn't it? So let's try and simplify it. Everyone knows how to work a telephone. You dial a number and someone's telephone rings. When they pick it up, you can talk to them. A phone number is typically an area code and a number, a bit like this. The 0111 refers to the regional exchange and the following digits route the call to the individual telephone within that region. We're so used to this, we no longer think about it. You can also add in the area code for international calls. Again, we're used to this. You could also write it this way, or simply country, region, telephone. We can think of an IP address in the same way. Here's a typical IP address. And while not strictly accurate, you can think of it in this way. Country, region, city, computer. As you can see, basically an IP address is like a telephone number for computer devices. Let's continue talking about the telephone for the moment. It's a good analogy and I'll continue to use it throughout this video. So here we have a switchboard. The switchboard is manually controlled by a receptionist. There are two types of number in use. An external number that people can call and internal numbers or extensions that the call can be put through to. The extensions can make calls out, but any incoming calls have to be dealt with by the receptionist and routed to the relevant extension. The beauty of this system is that the internal numbers can be used by other switchboards because calls cannot be connected directly. So every switchboard can have the same numbering scheme for its extensions. You can think of the humble internet router as a switchboard. Just like the telephone system, there are two different types of number. External, also known as a real world address, and internal IP addresses. The external IP address can be thought of as our main number on the switchboard. This is the number or address that you're allocated by your internet service provider. The internal addresses can be thought of as extensions. Again, other routers can use the same numbering scheme internally as calls have to be handled by the router. For most routers, internal IP addresses are usually in the form 
192.168.1.x, where x is a number between 1 and 254. This is what's known as a 32-bit address, and it's set out in four 8-bit segments. The router itself will have its own internal IP address, usually 192.168.1.1 or 192.168.1.254. If you're still not sure about the way IP addresses work, wind back a bit and take another look. It's important to understand the concept of IP addressing before we go any further. IP addresses can be allocated in two different ways, static and dynamic. Static means that the IP address is always allocated to that device and never changes. This is just like your telephone number. After all, no one would know how to contact you if your telephone number kept changing. Dynamic means that your address is allocated to you when you connect. Think of it as plugging your telephone in and getting a number allocated at that point. While you may get allocated the same number, you may not. This is the way most people get their IP address from their internet service provider. After all, if all you're doing is making outgoing calls, your number is not that important. These days, our telephones are constantly battered by unwanted sales calls and nuisance calls of all kinds. The internet is just the same. And there are steps we can take in both instances to increase our security from these kinds of problems. Everyone knows about running virus scanners on our computers to check for malware, etc. And most computers have a firewall of some kind for added protection. But actually, protection from unwanted intrusion starts much earlier at the humble internet router. Let's have another look at our switchboard. A call comes in and is answered by the receptionist. You then tell the receptionist what extension you want and they put you through. At this point, you can't ring the person you want directly because their extension number is different to the main outside number. This is a really good start to security. Nobody can make a nuisance call to you if they can't get through directly. You can, however, make calls out without contacting the receptionist by dialing nine before your number. Switchboards have worked this way for a long time. You've guessed it, the Humble Internet router works in exactly the same way. You can make calls out through the router, but anyone trying to dial in can only get as far as the router. This is because the real world IP address is on one side of the router and the extensions or devices have different numbers or internal IP addresses on the other side. Of course, there are times when you need to be contacted directly. On modern switchboards, you might give your direct number to certain valued customers. This enables them to bypass the switchboard and contact you directly. In the world of computer devices, certain games and applications also need a direct number to work correctly. To achieve this, there are allocated ports which are allowed through to the relevant device, just like having a direct number. This is called network address translation. We translate the real world IP address to an internal one for a specific application. We do this by using a process called port forwarding. A classic example of port forwarding is using an HRI 200 with wires X. In order for it to work, we have to give it a direct number. In fact, we give it several. There are two types of port forwarding we can use, depending on requirements. I'm not going to explain the differences in this video. Just be aware that ports can be UDP or TCP or both. For wires X, we need to allocate these ports as UDP. And these are the port numbers we need to forward. Without these ports, wires X will not work with an HRI 200. 
what port forwarding does is allow us to allocate these ports to the internal IP address of the computer you're using. Think of this like a table. Now each of these ports has a different role to fulfill in YSX, like node control or voice, etc. Note that all of the ports are allocated to the same IP address. Earlier, I spoke about static and dynamic IP addresses. If you look at our table, you'll see that if the IP address were to change, the ports would no longer point to the correct computer, unless we go back into the router and alter the IP address again. Not ideal. Fortunately, there is a solution. The Humble Internet Router normally allocates internal IP addresses dynamically. That is, when you turn on a computer, it allocates an address from a range of IP addresses known as its DHCP range. DHCP is an acronym and stands for Dynamic Host Control Protocol. Quite a mouthful, isn't it? All you need to know is that this is the system that allocates IP addresses to devices dynamically. In the vast majority of cases, this is absolutely fine and makes it very simple to connect devices to the router requiring very little input from you. As we've seen above though, occasionally we need to make sure that our YSX computer always has the same internal IP address. We can do this by choosing an IP address outside the DHCP range. These addresses will never be allocated automatically. Here's an example of a DHCP range. You can see that it starts at 192.168.1.10. This means that anything below this address will never be allocated dynamically to a device. As the router, or gateway in this case, has been set to have 192.168.1.1, that leaves us 192.168.1.2 to 192.168.1.9 that we can allocate to devices as static addresses. If you remember our table, we used 192.168.1.5 to forward the YSX ports to. All we have to do now is to configure our Windows computer running YSX to use that IP address when it connects and our job will be done. I'll be showing how to set a static IP address in Windows 10 in the next video, which will explain how to set up YSX using an HRI 200. So there we are, the Humble Internet Router. And I hope I managed to explain some of the mysteries of the Humble Internet Router in a way you found useful. It's one of those subjects that's really difficult to explain without going into a certain amount of depth. I should say at this point, if you need to set up port forwarding and you don't feel confident to do so, don't attempt it. Find someone to do it for you. Every router is different and the way the ports are forwarded varies from make to make. There's no way I could explain how to do it for every make of router, although there are websites that show how to do it on just about every router out there. If this video has at least helped you to understand how the internet works via your router and how IP addresses work, then I'm a happy man. Thanks very much for watching, and until the next time, cheerio. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please click the like button and do consider subscribing to the channel. If you click the bell icon, YouTube will notify you every time I release a new video.